going on in here? Whoa! Hey! Whoa! 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 What are you doing, man? Engine swap. What do you mean, engine swap? It's the only way to do it. Huh. Pretty sure there's a better way, man. All right, in all seriousness, uh, we're swapping this four-stroke ADCC engine into this 1972 Kitty Cat. The reason why we're doing this is because uh, a lot of forums are saying that this is not really a reliable engine, and uh, the kids want to ride it every other day, so we want to make sure that we have something that's more reliable. So uh, we're going to be swapping this out, trying to not compromise anything. We're not going to be hacking anything. We're just going to be removing the engine, keeping the engine plate, and just making a new one for that engine and trying to use, reuse the throttle, the brake, everything we can just so that way if ever we want to restore it or sell it, we can just reinstate that old one. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with the engine. There's good compression. It's just like the wires have been hacked and there was a lot of unknowns on this engine. So it'd be easier just to start with something fresh. And these engines from Princess Auto are basically you add fluid and you uh, fire them up. So it should be uh, fairly quick enough, but we've never done this before. So I guess uh, we'll find out at the same time. Yeah, and just one thing to note, these are designed for snow blowers and stuff like that. So they're made to be set to a certain throttle and kept there. Yeah. So there'll be a little bit of a modification to do there to get it to work with a, a snowmobile throttle. There's a few things I'm sure we're overlooking, but we'll figure out as we get there. And hopefully we can teach you guys a few things along the way. Yeah, exactly. Let's get to it. Sweet. working with uh, throttle actually you can do either manual or with the cable which is great so they have all the attachments that we need uh, the kill switch choke everything seems to be fairly simple so we're just gonna top off the fluid and see if this thing starts all right she's all full of fluid let's fire her up Now it's time to take this old engine out. All right, so engine's out. Here's a quick comparison of the two. Pretty similar in size. Now the new one seems a little more compact because the gas tank's located above the engine. And we're likely gonna have to change the exhaust uh, configuration just so it exhausts out the bottom, like the stock one. So a few things we noticed when we take, took the engine out. There's a nice crack in the frame rail here. We're gonna have to weld up. And also the steering is kinda in need of some love. So we tossed the new engine in just for a quick mock-up and to see hood clearance. We didn't really line up anything because we don't have the clutch on or anything. Uh, looks like the exhaust is definitely going to have to be reconfigured, which is what we expected. And I think the valve cover might be in the way of the steering depending on how far we need to push it back. But it should fit pretty good. So we put the stock engine plate back in to see where the engine lines up. Everything's in the way. So we'll have to take the exhaust off anyways just for the hood clearance. And we'll have to make a plate 
uh, to just match up with the original engine mount holes so we can push this back a little bit and have all the clearance we need. Obviously we're going to have to get a longer chain and we'll have to figure out how to mount the centrifugal clutch on it, but it uh, should work. Status update. Took the exhaust off. I put the other quick engine plate without the holes just to mock up the placement. Uh, we now have clearance for the hood, which is great. Uh, now we have to figure out if we can get this plate to work with the new engine mounts and the existing ones. Alright, stay tuned. I just put the clutch on the shaft here, and this chain is a uh, too short so we're gonna have to order another chain but just to try to line up where I have to put my mounting bolts on this new plate just gives me a good idea I'll just oversize the hole so that way we have some wiggle room to actually straighten it out but it's looking good let's carry on uh, we just finished the engine plate so this mounts to the stock engine bracket and that way we only had to drill two holes in the plate uh, we got some rev nuts in the frame rail here uh, so that I can uh, fasten in two more spots. I also did a quick weld on the area where the frame was cracked. And that's about it. So we're going to mock up the engine one more time. We just got the chain in the mail. So we can keep moving on this build. So uh, I've decided to stick with the original mounts for the throttle uh, cable mounts. We just pushed the throttle cable a little further. And it looks like it's going to stay. I also changed where we connected the... The spring, I just added another spring because it wasn't returning properly. So I just used a, a washer on the tank mount and bent the edge of it and drilled a hole so we could mount our spring through it and it returns a lot better, which is great. So uh, next up, I think we're going to start looking at the exhaust on the other side. So the way that it's lined up right now. It doesn't really make sense with where the chain is. It hits the chain here. Uh, I think that what I want to do is maybe uh, just repipe the manifold and have this uh, muffler down here if I have room. I have to install the tensioner first to see if I have enough room to do this. And I have to find that diameter pipe too to be able to add to it. Anyways, stay tuned. Making good progress. So this chain, I didn't really talk about where I got it. I picked it up on Amazon for about 25 bucks. It's a number 35 chain like the original one. So it fits the sprocket for the track drive. And it also fits the sprocket that's on the clutch. So it's perfect. The $25 gets you a 10 foot length. So I just cut it to size and use the master link. Um, so obviously I wanted to hold tension on this chain. So I picked up this guy, which was uh, I think 13 bucks on Amazon. It's just a... Uh, universal chain tensioner comes with the torsion spring on the back here I'm not sure if I'm going to use that or if I'm going to use uh, just a regular spring I wanted to mount it on the inside here to hold the tension on the bottom of the chain like so somewhere around that location see that see how that goes and if it works it works if not we'll just move on to another idea here's the first attempt for the chain tensioner I uh, cut a piece of plate back here just to kind of for additional support and also because that frame rail is kind of warped in that area so I wanted something flat so I could keep the tensioner flat and straight so I got rid of the torsion spring it wasn't going to work out with the design so what I'll do is I'll just drill a hole in the tensioner arm and have a bolt here and we'll just connect the spring so it keeps tension on the spring uh, so essentially this would be adjustable like this uh, so yeah, so I'll just throw the engine back in and then we'll see if everything lines up. So tensioner is in place. Unfortunately, it didn't work out exactly like I wanted, but uh, I was able to space it out here a little bit, if you can see. And I had to grind the plate I made a little bit to clearance uh, the shaft that the, this is spinning on. Uh, there is a bit of slack in the chain right now, which is good. So I'll be able to just adjust it. Yeah, the spring that I will install eventually. Uh, for now, this will do the trick. All right, so we switched up the work the workstation a bit. 
I decided to put it on the lift um, and it's upside down. Uh, I just had to tackle the steering real quick. Uh, that left ski was, uh, was stuck and I got it unseized. It's moving now, which is great. I just have to let the penetrating oil sit for a bit. So I'll probably let that sit overnight. Um, and as I had it upside down, I figured I'd take a look at the track. I didn't really spin it through the whole thing before and I knew it was in rough shape. It's a little rougher than I thought. There's a couple pull throughs and there's also these homemade studs of some sort. I guess the previous owner decided to throw some bars in there for some added traction. Unfortunately, it kind of damaged the track a little bit. So I might take them off and maybe clean them up a bit, shorten them a bit so it wouldn't tear up the tunnel and use them strategically maybe to fix those pull throughs over here. Anyways, uh, more fun, unexpected stuff, but that's how she goes with an old sled. Anyways, let's get to it. Alrighty, so I think I got the track repaired as best I could. So I found like six spots where it was uh, broken right through. So I reused these flat pieces of metal that the previous owner used for some reason. Uh, he looked like he tried to repair it a bit and to use it for traction, but I'm using it to do for repairs. It rolls a bit easier. You can do it with one hand, but it's still lots of resistance so we'll see how it goes i'm gonna flip this thing right side up and finish fixing the steering and then from there we'll throw the engine back in and maybe work on the exhaust a bit we'll see i'm not super happy with how it turned out but it's much better than it was at least it gives us a chance to get a rolling track uh, i might try to adjust it a little more we'll see how it goes but for the test drive it should be fine i'd rather not take it apart again but We'll see a new one's like 400 bucks, so I don't think I want to spend that. All right, so the engine's back together. I'm hoping that the tensioner does the job. Uh, the spring is definitely on the weaker side. I'm gonna have to beef that up a bit so it brings it back. There is a bit of slack in the chain, which is good. I think it should do the trick. Got the throttle connected. That's good. No brakes yet. That's just a minor detail. I'm not gonna slap the exhaust on just yet. I might Put it on. Oh, no, I won't put it on just yet. Um, I'm gonna try to fire it up and see if the whole chain assembly stays together. And uh, we'll see at what point the clutch engages. I haven't tested it with the track and chain everything engaged, so we'll uh, wait and see and see how it goes. Just turning the track manually didn't really move all that well, so hopefully, just the strength of the engine pulls it through. So what's the problem, Doc? Bad news, test number one did not work. <laughs> yeah. So these metal bars, it looks like it's getting in the way and it's binding the track too much that these cogs aren't getting in the holes they're supposed to. So when they're not touching the bar, it seems to roll fine, but when it goes through a bar, then the track just jams. Yeah, you can see all the resistance right now. Like it doesn't even want to turn. Yeah, so what I'm gonna try to do is, I'll take these bars off. We're gonna drill some holes on either side here and use this wire. And I'll see if it holds it a little better in place. Like it just needs to take the shape and not distort the whole thing. Hopefully that works. Uh, a new track's like 400 bucks. I'm not really interested in putting more money into it. It's more of like whatever I have laying around and the new engine. Yeah. So we'll see what that, if it works or not. 
Uh, it's probably the last attempt attempt before we actually buy a new track. Uh, we'll see how much the kids like to ride it. But uh, a couple more adjustments on the engine side too. The chain was a bit off whack after I put it in the, the last time. So I made some adjustments on uh, the holes for the mounting uh, bracket. And hopefully next time we'll be able to ride it. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, but so far the engine was running pretty well actually when yeah. we tested it earlier. The track was starting to turn and all that. So we're pretty close. I think I think we're almost there. It's just once we get rid of all this resistance and tension in the track, it'll be able to run properly. But we'll see. We'll give it a shot. Want. That's what we want. Woo. Battery 69%. Oh, yeah. So, this is a close up of the stitch work we did. It's gonna do just fine. The track's all stitched up. Seems to roll through a lot better, anyways. There's not much resistance. Hopefully, this. Uh, this technique worked and it'll hold up for the winter. I don't think the kids are going to be using it every day, but who knows? Anyways, I'm happy with it. We'll move on to the next thing, which is likely to throw the engine back in and work with the tensioner a little bit, work with the mounts and the orientation to make sure everything's nice and straight and true, and then hopefully take it for a rip. I forgot to turn on the camera the first time, so spoiler alert, it worked. Uh, it seems to only want to run on choke, so it just seems to die all the time. I think it's these snowblower engines have some kind of governor of when it works too hard, it just kind of kills the engine. And I think that's what's getting in the way, but it runs half choke or full choke. It moves the track, which is great, but it doesn't kind of spin idle, so it still has lots of resistance. But anyways, I'll just show you guys now. See if it starts up without choke. So one thing that I noticed is that there seems to be a lot of clearance between the exhaust and the drive chain, but when it bounces around, yeah, you can see, so I might want to see if I can just bump that up just a bit to get a little more clearance. And what else did I notice? Oh yeah, the tensioner was tight, but it seems to loosen up a bit. So I'm going to have to tighten that up a bit, but anyways, I think it's uh, good enough for a test drive, so I'll just get it off the hoist and uh, then throw it in the driveway where there's not a lot of snow and then see if it can uh, pull me around a bit. Anyways, here we go.
All right, so a few test drives later, I think it's safe to uh, say that the track held up pretty good. Uh, this looks like the stitching isn't ripping through, so we can move on to the next parts. Um, I started making a cardboard template of the, the dash. I kept it kind of similar to what the original dash was. I'll have the controls up here. It's just really to cover the front part of the engine. And I used the old chain cover here. I just cut it up a little bit. So uh, it works with the, the new setup. Uh, it's right next to the exhaust. So I trimmed it around. Uh, the exhaust, we might change the pipe finally. The chain slaps on it a little bit when we're riding. But I think for this year, I'll just weld it like that and we'll make improvements next year. I don't, I don't want to run out of snow by the time I'm done. So I'm going to try to make this out of sheet metal and see if it works. Again, this is probably just for this season. We're probably going to improve it a little more. Uh, on the other side, I left a little... I was wondering why there was a notch in the, in the stock one. I can pop up a picture so you guys can see, but it's for the pull cord on this side. So I just need to leave a room so I couldn't continue this uh, slope piece all the way and cover this section because we need the room to get to the pull cord and room to get to the choke an air box for now. In the future, I might extend this choke to the front or the side just to make it look cleaner. But again, this is just for this year. Just to cover it up so the kids are safe while riding it. Anyways, it's time to make this cardboard into sheet metal. See if it works. Alright, so first try from transferring from cardboard to street signs. It's just aluminum street signs I'm using. So I riveted the sides together, a few rivets on each side. Dirtier than I expected to be honest. So I'm gonna use on this side like I mentioned before. This here to cover the chain, keep the kids safe. And so far so good. I'm gonna cut the other panels and then cut a little check here to leave room for the pull cord that's in there. And then I'll probably just uh, figure out a way to fasten it to the mounts that were there before. And then I think that's gonna be it for this year anyways, just so uh, it's safe and ready to ride for the season. Then in the off season, we can uh, button everything up and make it look nice. So chain guard is on. I just used these little brackets that I had laying around for the top and the bottom. And I used them inside here. They're just flat brackets I just folded. Uh, they seem to do the trick. This thing's pretty solid. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to be doing the side piece here. So here's the finished prototype. Looks not too bad for something I just threw together with the, based off of my cardboard template. I added a piece of rubber here just to protect the cables here from the jagged edge. So it works out pretty good. My son took it for a test drive a couple times. He did great which is really exciting for me. Next up is the exhaust. Kind of fell off during the test drive. I didn't weld it together or anything like that. I had just did some pie cuts in it uh, to make it clear the chain. I never tacked it together, welded it together. I was just kind of had it mocked up. It was running fine anyways, but uh, I'll just try to wrap this up for the season so that way he gets to use it a little more. All right. So I got the rough spot of where I want the exhaust with a muffler. And I just cut the pieces to line up the angle so I can put the filler piece in between. I'll just tack it in place and show you what it looks like. Got it tacked in place. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but uh, it'll do the trick for this season anyways. I'll just go ahead and uh, burn through these welds and then probably throw a coat of uh, exhaust paint on it and then uh, call it a day. All right, so exhaust is back on, welded, painted, ready to go. Pretty much the final fab part anyways on this machine. The rest is just... Buttoning up all the 
missing bolts and miscellaneous stuff. Throwing a motor bolt sticker here, maybe a kill switch. We'll see. But for now, it's time to enjoy it. All right, so this is the final product for this year anyways. We got as far as we needed to, to make it safe for the kids to ride. Uh, my son's definitely looking forward. He got a taste of it the other day. Took it for a spin all by himself and he was uh, pumped. I'm not sure if he was as pumped as I was. I was pretty damn excited for him to ride it all by himself. Anyways, it was a fun little project, but we have to move on to other things. So uh, the plan was just to get it ready for him uh, to be safely riding it around the yard. And that's what we got done. So again, we threw a 80cc Princess Auto engine in there and did some light modifications to make it work. It was actually not that difficult. Anyways, off to the next project. Like and subscribe. Thanks again. Catch you later.